Bordeaux, one of the oldest winemaking regions in the world and the spiritual home of some of the world's most noble grapes, such as Merlot and Cabernet Sauvignon. Although Bordeaux produces world-class white and sweet wines, 90% of its production is its famed red wines. Unlike Burgundy, where wines will usually be made from one variety of grape, in Bordeaux, the art of blending is a fundamental aspect of the winemaking process. In fact, winemaking in Bordeaux has been developed over thousands of years. The red winemaking process begins with harvesting. However, knowing exactly when to harvest is never an easy decision. How do you know when it's the right time to collect the grapes? Starting uh, generally, so in, on the right bank, you harvest at the end of September, beginning of October. We start to do analysis of the berries mid-September. So we analyze the pH, the acidity, the weight of the berry. All this, we do it on several weeks. On every plot of the vineyard, we have uh, four or five analyses. Once the acidity is low and the sugar is quite high, we also taste the berries. Because even if the analysis say it's ready to pick, after nothing is uh, better than actually to taste and to see if the, especially the skin, if it's too thick or not. For us, it's uh, very exciting, but also worrying because we want to harvest in very good condition when it's sunny like today. And we are always scared about the rain. So sometimes you will harvest a bit earlier because uh, after you will have uh, one week of uh, bad weather with lots of rain. We try as much as possible not to harvest when weather conditions are not good. In Bordeaux, harvesting can be done either by hand or by machine. However, the top chateau will almost always hand harvest for their flagship wines. So in terms of how harvest can affect vintage, do you cut by hand, do you use machines? How does the harvest process look here? We do mechanical harvest and hand harvest. I would say that generally on all vines, because it's more fragile, uh, we do it by hand. And on younger vines, we use mechanical harvest with optical tree. Mm -hmm. Both of them are very qualitative. Now it's more on the age of the plot of vineyard that we make the difference. After harvest, grapes must be sorted to remove any unwanted berries. This process is usually done by hand. However, recent advances in technology have introduced mechanical sorting that is incredibly accurate. What does sorting mean? How does that look? It means that you take the, um, the berries out of the raffle. And on mechanical harvest, it's done with a machine. And today we have a very precise optical sorting that take out the berries. It's new technology and mechanical harvest is not like 20 years ago. Today it gives very good results. Once sorted, grapes will be ready to be transferred to vats, usually made of stainless steel. In Bordeaux, grapes will either be crushed to release their juice or placed in the vat as whole berries, but will always be destemmed first. So the grapes are harvested, they're sorted, and then what happens? When they are sorted, they go in the vats. Either uh, the berries are crushed mm -hmm. before it goes into the vats, or you put the berries and they are full. We do both here, mm -hmm. both techniques. Now when the berries are not crushed before they go in, you can find some difference into the wine. The wine will be more powerful, more round, because the fermentation, the alcoholic fermentation, is done more gently. Once in their vats, the unfermented grape juice will begin a process of maceration, extracting the colour, flavour and tannins from the grape skins and pips. During maceration, alcoholic fermentation occurs, either naturally or through the addition of selected yeasts to the vat. Alcoholic fermentation is the process of yeast consuming the grape's natural sugars. There are three natural byproducts of fermentation ethanol or alcohol, carbon dioxide, and heat. Whilst in the vat, winemakers may choose to increase the extraction of colour and tannins by either pumping over the must, which is the fermenting juice, or cap punching, pushing the grape skins down into the liquid. Producers may leave fermented juice with the skins for three to four weeks, even after alcoholic fermentation has finished, to increase tannins and structure in their wines. So if someone asks you about tannins, for example, where do they come from? The tannins come from the peps and the skin. And the skin, yeah. okay. 
After alcoholic fermentation, the existing juice is removed from the skins and the skins go through a pressing process to release any additional juice. After pressing, the wine is transferred to a new vessel, which may be stainless steel tanks. However, for fine wines, it will most commonly be transferred to new French oak barrels known as barrique. Whilst the process of malolactic fermentation may have already occurred, it will normally take place once in the new vessel. During malolactic fermentation, microorganisms naturally found in grape juice transform tart malic acid, found in green apples, into soft lactic acid, which is found in milk. This process softens the wine and helps to give it a smoother texture. The wine is then left to mature for 18 to 24 months, during what is known as élevage. While maturing, the wine will go through a racking process roughly every three months, where it is transferred to different barrels to remove any remaining sediment in the wine and also provide controlled oxygenation. This step is critical to the development of flavours and aromas in a red wine. In Bordeaux, producers commonly use 225 litre French oak barrels for maturation. Tiny pores in the wood allow for micro-oxygenation, softening the wine and creating a smoother final product. In Bordeaux, the art of blending is critical to the success of winemaking. Producers may choose to blend different grape varieties, parcels and styles of vinification before élevage, whilst others may do it at the end of élevage. Known as bench blending, producers will identify different attributes of each barrel of wine to decide on what their final blend will be. This is an incredibly labour-intensive and intricate process, and some wines in Bordeaux may be a blend of over 100 different wines. So speaking about the blending process, how many samples of the blends do you make before you select the final ones? Depends. Depends uh, of the year, but um, generally it lasts three months. And uh, sometimes it's once a week, sometimes it's twice a week, and uh, it's a time for arguing, because you have always the commercial against uh, the winemakers. So we ask for another blind testing the following days or week, and. Uh, to see how it evolves, because the ideas on the question, we have hours, you know, it's, it's a complex and very tense uh, time. Once blended, the wine will still be cloudy, so a process of fining may be done to remove unwanted particles, thus clarifying the wine. Fining agents may be natural proteins, which in Bordeaux has traditionally been egg whites, though synthetic products can also be used, most commonly in vegan wines. The final step of the process is filtration and bottling, with the wines being transferred from tank to bottle and the final cork being added. Bottles are then labelled and ready for sale. The best red wines of Bordeaux are a masterful blend, and no two years are the same, so winemakers must react to each vintage's specific conditions. These basic steps to winemaking in Bordeaux will vary between producers depending on their philosophy and winemaking style. Winemakers have to make a multitude of decisions along the way to capture the essence of the vintage and their signature in each and every bottle.